How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Today we have a special video guys. We're gonna have Coffee Liquor editing your footage. Thank you as always for the sick introduction, Josh. How's it going guys? It's Herman here and welcome to the first episode of a series where I edit your footage. Now, a couple weeks ago, I posted it on my Instagram story for you guys to send whatever footage that you want. It could be, you know, from a commercial that you shot, a music video, some random clips of your dog. It doesn't really matter. It could be anything. And the plan is to take your footage and make a short edit where I permify it. Terminate it? Where I add my coffee liquor touch. Sounds a little bit better. If you want to see me edit your footage on the series, DM me on Instagram with a downloadable link. For today's episode, I want to thank Shravan Rao for providing me his footage. Do a little follow back here because he's dope. So upon receiving these clips, I first tried to make sense of what I got. So going through his folder, we got this lovely drone shot that establishes the location. Three shots of our subject in an elevator with the doors closing and opening, but this one with the menacing stare. My boy, who hurt you? Two shots of our subject inside of a structure. One shot of him walking past this arced frame, I guess. And finally, a shot of this clock where the camera pans over to a train passing by. So guys, after seeing those clips, can you find the story in this? Because it's pretty obvious. I don't think there is one, but that's okay. Uh, it just means that I'm gonna go for the eye candy approach. And that means that I just want the edit to be fun to watch and replayable. Now, what I could do is just throw all these clips onto my timeline and add some transitions and call it a day. But that wouldn't really result in something that's interesting to watch. So I went through the clips and really thought about what I could do with them and make some logical sense to it. So my initial impressions were that the drone shot works great as an establishing shot. So we know exactly where we are, or it could work great as the very last shot for a grand reveal uh, to wrap everything up but I thought the door closing of the elevator would be a great last shot to signify the closure of the edit. With that in mind, drone shot goes to the beginning. I also noticed there's a similarity between the elevator shot and this one where he's in a profile shot. So there could be a match cut or some sort of transition. Now, because the train shot seems a little out of place, I decided to just not use it. I never said I had to use every clip. Editing also means taking things away. Same for the other elevator shots. I've kind of burned them by using that one shot at the very end, which leaves me with a four shot edit. Short and sweet, something that doesn't waste your time. In terms of style, I'll be adding some futuristic elements, not only because I like futuristic aesthetics, but because based off the shots, it feels like a desolate location since there aren't any people in the background. This makes me think that having cooler, stale tones would work with the vibe of the shots and create an atmosphere where I can introduce sharp neon colors to contrast it. Now, you might be thinking that I'm just full of shit and I want to add some cyberpunk stuff, but yeah, you're basically right. Sorry if you don't like cyberpunk stuff, Siobhan, but that's what we're going with. I'll be using assets from my Enter the Future pack to accomplish this. If you don't know what that is, it's a motion graphic asset pack I handcrafted and includes a variety of assets that you can use for your music videos, your commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. If you're looking for transitions, borders, or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, I recommend checking it out. With all that said, let's walk through the rest of it in front of my computer. So we are in Premiere right now. I'm just gonna keep my voice down a little bit so I'm not too disruptive. With the people around me. They'd probably kick me out if I was so loud all the time. We got the four shots over here in the timeline. We got this establishing shot. We got this shot over here where it's uh, him looking out into the distance. We got this elevator shot over here as well. And then we got this shot over here. Actually, I'm just gonna move it around like this. So it's this one first and they'll transition into this. This is basically how I want it to look. But how long do I wanna hold each clip for? Uh, that's what I'm gonna determine now by first putting the music in. So I'm gonna use this track over here. It's got some beeps and the boops and I like it, but it has this kind of like deep atmosphere type of like empty, vacant feel, which I kind of like. So I've trimmed the music to the approximate duration that I want the edit to be within. And that determines how long I want each clip to be. And I think that I want to take on the challenge to make this edit loop. Is it going to be too big of a challenge? I don't know, but it's too late now. Can't take it back. So let's try it out. We're going to highlight these clips and we're going to dynamic link them into After Effects. So that's going to open it up and then bring it all into a lovely composition like this. So we're going to throw these footage into the footage bin like this. It's always great to keep things organized, especially when you don't really know what you're doing. I'm thinking that because this character is going to be in this building over here, it's great to kind of point that out um, going for that futuristic aesthetic. So maybe this is like a drone shot. I mean, it is a drone shot, but maybe it's like analyzing where this person is and this person is like an Android. So I'm gonna start importing some assets from my Enter the Future pack. So let's bring this in, let's bring this in, let's bring this in. I'm just gonna drop this asset on top like this just to see if it actually looks good. So if I have this targeting kind of this area right over here, I think this might look good. But it looks kind of lame that it's not tracking the actual uh, structure. I'm not sure what this is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up Mocha and use Mocha AE since I'm just doing some planar tracking. Oh God, this is a lovely little warning. So we're gonna change the resolution to high because it's telling me that it's a half resolution. Might be faster, but it won't be as accurate. So we're just gonna zoom in like this 
we're going to draw around this structure and we're just gonna track forward let mocha do its magic it's not magic it's like algorithm and formulas and some sort of science i don't know hit control s very important to save and then we're back in after effects i'm going to create a new null object like this call it track uh building we're going to export the tracking data by hitting that create tracking data and it's the only layer that i tracked change the export option to transform and then we're going to set the target to that one the null object and then now we have all this beautiful data like this oh there's one problem though oh, sh composition is an hd so let me delete this and redo all this by pre-composing it i'm going to could edit all this out but then i think that it is a mistake worth mentioning since this can happen to other people my after effects froze oh there we go all right here we are in mocha again but this time in hd all right now we do the same thing create track data boom now it is tracked onto that building and then now watch this enable the visibility so we see this thing uh we're going to have it approximately where we want it kind of like this and then we're going to parent it over to the null object this can just follow the data another thing i want to add is this target element from my pack and that is to basically establish what this is so i kind of want to like put a text call out kind of like this and then we'll also track it to that null object earlier and the reason i'm doing that is because i'm going to add some text that says like you know target over here or something like that. I think I'm actually going to trim this by masking it just like that and keep it nice and short so that I can scale this up actually. We got something like this now. Okay, so we got this text. I'm going to parent it also over there and then I kind of don't want it to just stay there. So I'm just going to kind of add like a very simple flicker effect by playing with the opacity. 100, 0, just working backwards here. And then 30, 0, and then I don't know maybe like 46 and then zero. And then if I play it through, this is what I have so far for the shot. So I feel like I'm missing some sort of like more elements to kind of make it look like a HUD. So I'm gonna add this uh, array number four, just right on top. And then just make sure that the scale is matching. And then this is kind of like a blue, not matching with the highlight of the orange. So I'm going to add something called change to color. Oh, by the way, this plugin is called Effects Console by Video Copilot, it's a free plugin. And we're going to change the color from this color over here to this color over here and then if we look back it's not bad but we want to change the hue light and saturation i think now this is not looking bad so far but of course this is you know a very flat picture profile that is shot on the drone but we're going to color it later on in post so that it's more like muted colors that i talked about earlier all that bs that i was doing i'm just going to try and have the rough kind of like motion graphics done over here and then i'm going to export it separately and then just lay it on top in premiere in terms of motion graphics i'm happy with this i'm going to use red giants universe series uh chromatic aberration like this so we're just going to highlight all of these things uh, over here. It's the motion graphic and also the tracking null. And we're just going to call it something like drone MG, MG standing for motion graphics. And then in here, I'm going to double click it, make a new adjustment layer, call it deep glow, since that's the effect that we are using. Which is like glowing things, that's a little bit too much. So we're just going to pull it back to 0.4. Now I'm thinking about doing an interesting transition into the next shot since this cut from here to here is a little bit harsh. So one way to glue it together is by using one of my favorite plugins, which is Pixel Sorter. And I'm going to apply that to a new adjustment layer. And we'll even turn on the motion graphics so we can have that effect. So it's gonna start off like this. We're going to keyframe it. So starting from here over to here, maybe we'll even kind of extend it a little more. And I actually extended the clips in the pre-comp earlier. So it's gonna look kind of like, uh, what's happening here? So this is what I have so far. It just kind of pixel sorts away, which is a really interesting effect, but I want it to continue on over here. So I'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer so I can make some further adjustments why it's called an adjustment layer, I guess. Now this is looking a little bit wet and droopy for some reason, and it's probably because there are not enough pixels to kind of sort. So we're gonna add a noise, and that's a nice way to add some texture to it. We're gonna move it so it's before the pixel sorter, and then we're just gonna introduce some green over here. And let's go up to like 30. It's about to get a little crazy here. We'll turn off this use color noise, and we will keyframe it so that it is only happening during this portion where the pixel sorter effect is happening. I'm actually thinking about just having it happen around this side of the comp so i'm just going to mask it now just like the drone shot we're going to track some points in this shot so let's try tracking his eye and seeing how that does so we exported the tracking data over to this layer over here that says uh track eye now i'm not a big fan of how it rotates like that so i'm just going to uncheck and uncheck the scale all i want is the position so what i'm going to do now is cut out a mat and basically what i'm doing is i'm going to add a graphic on top of his pupil but i want to make sure it doesn't leak out of his eye sounds a little more disgusting than it actually is but let me just show so we're going to use the pen tool like this. We're going to draw around the area of his eye like so. Change the feather to something like two. We're going to parent it over like this. And then it just kind of follows 
the eye. Then we're gonna add this animation called orbit like this. And I'm just gonna rescale it to something like 10, maybe something that kind of fits his eye, maybe something a little smaller, like six. And then I'm just going to turn it into a 3D layer so that I can actually turn it a little bit. And then we're just going to put it underneath this mat. And then we're going to toggle this and use this so that now it's within that eye. Now, of course, this graphic is a little bit too sharp, especially since the subject is a little out of focus. So we're just going to add a fast blur Two might be okay. Something like 10 might be better actually. And I'm thinking about tinting this so that it's not white. So we're just gonna add a tint like this. So that will change the white to whatever color that we want. I want it to be the same accent color from this. And as you guessed it, I'm gonna add a glow, but this time I want it to be a little more intense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this like this so it's brighter. And then we'll add something like a fast box blur like so. And then we're just gonna duplicate it again. And then we're gonna change the radius to something a little more. I'm pretty happy with this pupil. I think I can just move on, but uh, uh, I think that I'm going to throw it underneath over here so that the pixel sorter later will affect it and then we'll call it something like pupil glow and then we'll change the blending mode to screen. So we're gonna work on this shot now and in this case, I actually want to, okay, so I sped up the clip a little bit so I'm going to go back to 100% like this. We're going to pre-compose this and call this clip three because it's the third clip. I'm just gonna add a marker over here because this is approximately when the next cut will happen to the clip four. And we're gonna add an effect called Twixter, which is an effect that allows you to basically retime things. And I'm just setting up some parameters that I already know will be effective. I'm gonna change to use the GPU on like this. And basically I can slow things down, which is really neat. Uh, it was a really popular plugin back in the day. Still fairly popular, I think. And I still use it quite regularly to do speed ramps. So we're gonna change this to something like 300 like this. And then right when it gets to around the middle, that's when I'm going to go down to like 10. And we're just going to also ease the slowness of it. Oh, what's this? Don't send report. That's okay, we're starting from here. So I finally caught up and just to make things a little bit less hard on my PC, I'm gonna actually pre-compose this. Wait, this is already pre-composed. I'm going to pre-render this by hitting Control M and I'm just gonna render it as I usually would, but I'm just gonna put it in this uh, folder over here. And basically what that means is I'm going to render this clip and import it back in so that I'm not going to have that effect running as I apply more effects. And what I'm thinking about doing is actually roto brushing. So starting from around here, I'm just gonna split the crypt crip the clip I've been editing so long that i can't even talk anymore i'm just going to go to this roto brush tool over here double click it and then with the amazing roto brush 2.0 it'll do a fantastic job i'm just going to draw around our subject over here switch over to the refine edge tool and we're just going to go along the edge like this you guys didn't see it but my computer just totally froze and i had to reset it and we're just going to pick up where i left off at the second time now i think it's done a pretty good job although there's some compression along the uh, edges of whatever i'm rotoing i think it's okay for the type of transition that i'm going for so i have frozen it it is freezing right now please don't crash again spotify we don't need you right now oh ho, ho, we are done freezing not amazing not terrible and that's because the background is really tough for the subject to separate from because it's pretty busy i'm actually going to duplicate this and delete this so that you can kind of see See the background's quite busy with all the greenery. So just like how I pre-rendered earlier, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one so that it's a load off my PC. And now we just sit back and wait for that beautiful After Effects render sound. You know what I'm talking about. This is the longest one minute of my life. There we go. Let's bring it in, bring it in just over here. We're gonna replace that clip by throwing it on top and we're just gonna make sure it lines up. Oh my God, that's a trippy effect. Maybe in the future. And we're going to do something like this, solo it, we know it's rendered. And then boom, we have this on top. Now it's not a beautiful on top type of thing. There's like some weird fringing along the edge of the subject for some reason that I'm not a big fan of. So I'm actually going to just use that as a mat. I don't know if that's gonna help, but let me give it a try. What I mean is I'm going to duplicate this layer and then I'm gonna use the top layer as an alpha mat so that it doesn't use this layer. We don't see the roto brush layer, but we see the layer underneath and we're using that as a mat. So now it looks like a lot cleaner. I think this is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna pre-compose this again because I love pre-composing things as you might know by now. It's gotta stay organized. And the reason I'm going through all this madness is because I want to take this clip. I'm going to just cut it out and then put it over here. And I think that this will line up if I am, nope, it does not line up. Let's throw it over here. I think this is right. And now we're just going to try and match the same position as the shot over here with the one previously. So I'm probably gonna go with difference, kind of like that. No, okay, never mind. We're gonna change the transparency to something like this where I can see what's going on. 
I'm gonna see if I can kind of match this actually. And then we can always change it to something like difference like that. And then I can kind of see a little bit better. And then now if I change back to normal like this and then switch it back on and off, on and off, pretty good. Okay, so we're going to actually keyframe the scale, rotation, and the position so that it starts off kind of like this and then it will scale out like this. But I realized that the elevator door does not close by the time that I actually want the video to end. So I'm gonna pre-compose it. And then in that pre-composition, I'm going to add that Twixter effect like before and then keyframe the speed so that it kind of like it's okay that it's slow right now but once it reaches about here i want it to just be like a quick and we're going to ease the movement because that is the secret sauce that i like to use to really make things look more polished instead of just this like sudden abrupt speed ramp so here's what's going to happen i'm going to create a new adjustment layer i'm going to play with an effect i'm not sure if this is going to work but it's a, an effect that i've been playing around quite recently and it's called displacer pro we're going to take the luminous channel and the map layer from clip three i believe so i'm going to keyframe it so it's zero percent over here and then we're going to go forward a little bit somewhere around here and we're going to get it so that it melts all the way down. And because we isolated that foreground element, our subject, it's on top of the effect, so the effect will not be applied to it. So it'll apply to everything below it, which unfortunately includes the clip number four. So not to worry, we can actually cut this and throw it into this pre-comp over here. So it only affects this. But I kind of want to mess around with this effect a little more. One of the things that I can do is add a bit of a chromatic aberration. So we're going to go something like 1.05, 0.95. And then we got this nice little rainbowy effect because it's transparent in the back if i go back to this layer over here and it doesn't affect the one underneath it'll just kind of reveal the one underneath like this so i'm going to see if i can match this position a little bit better so this is a little bit better it has that rotation but you can see the edge over here and i can always crop in or i can add an effect called motion tile where i will mirror the edges like so so that I got that nice little cheat. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have kind of like separate transition from the subject and the background. So I'm going to keyframe the opacity. So it's kind of like fading away because if I don't have this, it just kind of like shrinks down, right? Like the subject shrinks down and then we got this, which is still pretty interesting. Got this kind of warping around the chest area over here. But if I include this, then you have that extra couple frames to digest the match cut. I'm going to actually do something a little bit different. I'm going to add one more just like this. I'm just duplicating it. I'm going to change the blending mode to something else. And just to kind of motivate this slow-mo, I want to add one more graphic because this can feel a little bit too deliberate, I guess. So just to kind of add something to glue it together, we're going to add this transition called ripple from my ETF pack. And then we're just going to retime it so that kind of justifies the slow-mo, if that makes sense. Now, although I'm a strong advocate about not caking your edit with too many effects, in this case, because it's pure eye candy, I'm just going to go freaking overboard. Like I'm just going to go crazy, but not to a point where you're going to be blinded and you have epilepsy after watching my edit. So your discretion is advised. All right, so I'm happy with this transition over here. And now it's time to figure out how I'm gonna make this loop. And what I'm thinking of actually doing is splitting this clip up into two halves and then have it kind of appear as the door is closing. I have it kind of visually mapped out in my head, but I don't know if it's gonna work. There's only one way to find out by wasting time. Now with the opacity lowered, I'm gonna take the pen tool and I'm just gonna draw the separating point of the elevator doors. And then we'll call this like L for left. We'll call this one R for right. And then we'll just change the mask to subtract so we have the other half like this now it's really optimistic of me to think that this is going to work out but the best way to find new techniques and explore new ways of being creative transitions so we're going to keyframe the positions over here and then if i take a look over here it looks like it's also rotating but instead of rotating both layers we're going to create a new null object and we're going to call that rotation like this and then i want it to affect both of these layers so i'm going to parent it over we're going to hit the stopwatch over here so that we can kind of rotate it like so actually I should really position the, oh, that's not it. I'm going to reposition the halves of the door approximately to where they should be. And then like that trick before, I'm going to just use motion tile. It can be a little bit rough and dirty. Do the same thing on this other layer. And then we've got these filled layers. Now, instead of having them at 32% opacity, we're going to have it 100. And then I'm just going to figure out how I'm going to make this work. All right, I think I may have figured it out. I'm basically doing a transition that is inspired by Sam Colder. Uh, he does a lot of amazing travel videos and basically change the 
blending mode to lighten for both of these, not this one, but now it is. And I basically keyframe the levels over here so that it gradually becomes uh, brighter. So it starts off really dark so that you don't really see much of it. But we still see a little bit of these brighter areas over here and then slowly it just becomes more apparent. And then I also added a camera blur. The camera blur is really hard on my computer right now. So I just turned it off so you can kind of see roughly what it looks like. So it just kind of appears in it's like closing elevator door. Now it feels a little bit weird that this is still so bright. So I think that I'm going to add an adjustment layer and then just darken it kind of. And add this nice little loading bar for my pack so that it feels like there's a nice little finish because it's a loading bar that goes up to 100. And then once it's 100, boom, it loops and it's complete. Now this composition is a little bit messy, but I'm going to try and find all the motion graphic ones and I can just isolate them and render those out as one layer. And then I'll render out the live footage separate. And the reason that I want them separate is because I don't want the color grade to affect the motion graphics. I'm going to be talking a little bit quieter now because people are sleeping and I've just been taking so long with this edit. But once I've imported the clips into Premiere, I'm going to do some sound design and add some sound effects. All right, I've managed to make it perfectly loop with the sound effect and the music, which is dope. Always love taking on challenges. I actually like the succeeding part. But now we're on the final step, which is the color grade. So let's work on that. Now I'm gonna do something a little unconventional. Usually you would color each clip, but because I exported in one fat clip like this, I'm going to actually apply the color grade to adjustment layers. And because there are a lot of transitions, what I'm gonna do is probably fade in and out uh, in terms of the color grade. So it goes from one grade to another. So it's a little more seamless. So like this though it has a pretty distinctive moment where it's like a different shot so i think i can just do a simple split over here but for something like over here where it's going to be transitioning into this shot i might want to do a bit of a fade from one grade to another the last thing i'm going to add in is some lens flares to really give it that cinematic look and add to the atmosphere we are finally done let me show you the before and now the after That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of this edit. It's something new that we're trying at the Olufemi channel. So let us know what you think down in the comments below. Also, I'd love to know what you would have done with today's footage. So you can chat in the comment section as well. Now, if you wanna see me edit your footage, DM me on Instagram with a downloadable link to your footage. Again, it could be anything and however many clips that you want, as long as it's reasonable. Don't give me like 114 clips. That'd be a lot to sift through guys. While you're there, you can stay up to date with what I'm up to by following me. My IG handle is at coffee liquor. If you like the assets that were used in my edit, then check out my pack. It's called Enter the Future. It was designed for modern creators like you to give your video an upgrade. You can click the little pop-up for more information. I think it's this corner or maybe that corner. I'm not, I'm not too sure. And guys, make sure to subscribe to the Olufemi channel if you want to see more like this or for more tutorials from Josh, the other instructors, or myself. The bell notification is also a great way to never miss the next video. So make sure that you click that. That's all I have for you guys today. So again, my name is Herman and I'll see you guys in the next video. Guys, we have finished yet another incredible tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, remember to keep it chill.